Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today, not a VFX or motion graphic tutorial. I will show you how to easily create crystal quartz from scratch and how to texture it to have a really unique result. After this tutorial, you will be able to create the look you want for your refractive shader project. As always, you can find all this in file for these two projects on my Patreon. Okay, let's go. So we are in 3ds Max and first I'm going to create a primitive cylinder like this. Side to 6 and A to 1. Okay, now I create a sphere and I move this sphere in the center of my cylinder. I select the cylinder, go to Compound Object and I select Boolean. I activate Add Operand and I pick my sphere. I can go now to Intersect to create the two intersections between these two shapes. I can go to the sphere in the Boolean and decrease the number of segments, maybe 6. And we see here that we start to have a pretty interesting crystal shape. You can go back in the Boolean tab, double click on the sphere, and you can move the sphere as you want to adjust the look of the crystal. You can do the same with the cylinder. Okay, once you are satisfied, you can add an edit body, select edge, Ctrl A to select all the edge. And now I will add the chamfer modifier and set the amount to 0.05. It's good like this. Okay, so we have here a very cool crystal quartz mesh. That is perfect if I want a clean look, but we will go further and I will show you now how to add detail to this mesh. First, I want to add subdivision, so I'm going to add a qualify mesh modifier and decrease the quad size. You can see here the subdivision. I will add a turbo smooth and increase the subdivision to 2. And we see that I have very, very detailed subdivision for my mesh. I add now a volume select modifier because I don't want to add detail on all the crystal. Just deselect the smooth for the moment. I select vertex. Go to the gizmo. And I can now move this gizmo to select the vertex I want. I can activate the uh, use of selection and play with the fall off to smooth the separation between the clean and the detailed surface. Maybe like this. And I can now add a displace. Activate spherical mapping. Up the scale of the gizmo. And increase my strength value to see how the displays affect my mesh. I can also play with the gizmo to more control my displays. Now I'm going to create a noise map. Set to turbulence for the moment and link the noise to the map slot of my displays modifier. I reactivate now my turbo smooth. Disactivate the wireframe in the viewport and I'm going to play with the setting of my noise map. I can really decrease the size, set to fractal. Play with the high and low value, maybe 0.8 and uh, 0.4. I really increase the level to add detail. I can now go back to my displays and increase the strength. It starts to look very interesting. You can of course go back to the volume select and change the follow if you want. And continue to play with the nice setting, high and low value, size and more to create the look you want for your crystal. I can add again another turbo smooth to add extreme detail in my mesh. I will just decrease a little my low value. Do the same thing for the fall off. I think it's better like this. What is great with this process is that you can change every part of the shape of the crystal. I can deselect all the modifier to go back to the initial shape and go in the boolean to move, rotate, scale the sphere or the cylinder to create a total different look. It's really useful to create a lot of different shapes, you just have to clone the mesh and play with the orientation. I can reactivate all my modifier and I have here a really cool new version of my crystal quartz. And once we are satisfied, we can go to the next step, the texturing. Okay, so I have here my 3D cell and a simple very material. We can change the diffuse color. Go to white to activate here the reflection. And we can do the same on the Refract tab to start creating a glass material. 
We can up a little the max depth to increase the quality on the reflection and reflection and activate reflect on backside for the reflection to have more little detail. If you want to create an effect like chromatic aberration or light spectrum, you can activate the aim number. Here it's good with the 50, but if you want to really exaggerate this effect, you just have to decrease the value. It's a really cool setting, but I will not use it for this render. What you can do too is play with the fog color to fill your mesh. Play with the fog multiplier to change the intensity. And you can change the fog bias value to change the density of the fog effect. I will stay like this for the moment. A cool thing to do is just to use Typhlo to create bubble inside the crystal. So I have here a simple brush with a lot of particles. For the position object, it's just a clone of the same crystal but uh, with a lower scale to not have bubble outside the crystal. For the shape, I use uh, pebbles and geosphere. Pebbles are used because bubbles don't have necessarily a perfect shape, so it's cool to add variation for the bubble shape. And to finish, just a classic random 3D. The material for this bubble is just a classic glass preset. I just increase the IR value to see more of the bubble in the crystal. I can now launch a render and we see here the beautiful bubble in the crystal. Okay, now if you analyze a crystal, you can see that uh, you have often variation in the density of the reflection, so we will try to simulate that. I create a nosmap linked to my refract. We see now that the reflection is more blurry. And now we will play with the noise setting level, high, low value and size to increase the contrast between white and black. So maybe like this. Size to 20 starts to reveal the reflection. I play again with the threshold and start to look very interesting. You can of course offset the UVW to change the position of the reflection blur. Decrease the black value will totally reveal the crystal. So I can maybe set an in between. It's up to you to create the look you want. A cool thing to do now is to change the diffuse color, change the fog color tool to create a really beautiful color crystal. I just play with the thumb map to increase the contrast. Change again the color. I think it's really cool like this. Now what I want to do is to add a surface imperfection on my crystal, so I'm going to create a very bit map for the bump. I select maybe a beautiful fiber texture. You can get the same texture than me on my Patreon, but you can also easily find doors, grunge texture on internet. I can now set my bump value and launch a render. And we start to see dot imperfection on the crystal. A cool thing to do to really see how your bump is mapped is to create another V-ray material. Apply this texture to your mesh and link the bump to the diffuse. Now you can easily see how your texture is on the crystal and adjust the UVW. You can also link your V-Ray UVW randomizer to the bitmap and select Tocastic Tilling to randomize the UVW and avoid repetition. Now you can easily see how your texture is on the crystal and adjust UVW. Okay, what we can also see on crystal is different glossiness refraction like maybe freezing part, so we'll try to recreate this. So I create another very bit map for the refraction glossiness. I just activate all to only see my refraction glossiness. And I select an imperfection map. Maybe this one. We don't see much change, so I can go in the output of the map. Enable color map. I can maybe add a point here. And when I play with the curve, I can totally increase the contrast of my map and see the change on my render. I just launch a render, and we see here's the result. Beautiful glossiness variation on this side, and on the top too. Another cool thing to do that I've already explained is to create a composite map to mix texture. I just one more time want to see the result on my very material to perfectly adjust the final look. I can now add another layer, change the map, 
go back to composite and play with the mode and opacity to create unique look. Okay, it was just to show you that you can play with the composite, but I'm really satisfied with my previous look. So I will just link all my map and launch a render to see the result. You can of course change the map to create different look, change the color diffuse, change the four color to adjust the rendering according to what you want to create. You can if you want mix again texture with creating a very blend material, link this texture to the base. I can now create a very material for the coat. You can activate or not the additive mode, it's as you want. Go to the blend one and load again another very bit map, or maybe just play with a noise map. Adjust the setting like I showed you previously. I change the color to a beautiful yellow. Maybe it's too strong, so I can go back to the noise and play with a black and white value. With the black, I increase, and with the white, I decrease. Let's load the render to see. And cool results! You have a lot of possibilities. You see here the process to create really cool crystal quartz texture. You can play on the diffuse color, fog to mix them, with a refract to blur or not your crystal, add detail with the bump and the glossiness, combine effect with a very blend, you have infinite possibilities. Okay, it's over for this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot of things. As always, don't forget to thumbs up and to subscribe if you like my work. You can also follow me on Instagram and support me on Patreon if you want. See you soon for our next tutorial, guys. Bye.